Hello and welcome to West New York Brews. My name is Scott and today we are going to be performing some maintenance on our SS BrewTech brew bucket. Uh, you want to go through uh, maintenance steps like this about once every year or when the brew bucket needs it. So right now I've got some water spots on the outside. The inside we have some uh, white powder that is precipitated onto the surface on the inside of that and we're going to get rid of that and we are going to repassivate this right here. So passivation is a process in which we are going to use an acid solution, in this case star sand, and let it soak in here for about 20 to 30 minutes to help create a chromium oxide layer on the inside here and make it more passive uh, when reacting to chemicals or the air. We don't want it to react to the air, we don't want it to rust, we don't want it to corrode, so we're going to help create that layer, which is going to make it more chemically passive. So this is something that you do when you first buy the brew bucket, or about once a year, or whenever it needs it, and right now this brew bucket needs it. So things that I have with me, ready to go for this, I am first going to clean with PBW, and then we are going to passivate with star sand and this is an eight ounce container of star sand we're going to be using the entire thing in here i have some gloves to make sure that i keep my hands safe not only from chemicals but from heat i have a sponge so that i can do the cleaning portion first i have a bottle brush and i have replacement o-rings for all of the pieces that need the o-rings and you can find the sizes for these at ss brewtech's website or you can order the replacement kit for like a dollar ninety eight so that's what I did. I got two of them and they sent them here. I also printed out the instructions. Uh, these are the instructions that you would get if you uh, scanned the QR code when you get your SS BrewTech brew bucket. I printed them out and I have the replacement batteries for the LCD thermometer. I never use the LCD thermometer so it really doesn't bug me but I'm going to show you how to change the batteries anyway and these replacement batteries came with the SS BrewTech brew bucket. I also have a pot of water over here, about two gallons of it boiling. Boiling water. Now we're not going to use boiling water to passivate, but we are going to use the heat from that and add in some cold water. But the reason I have it boiling is because the first thing we're going to do is we're going to sterilize the silicone o-ring from the top of the brew bucket's lid. Now I also have a length of silicone tubing which I use as a blow-off tube in both of my brew buckets so I'm going to boil that as well because I've got the water boiling. Might as well, right? And we want to let those boil for about 10 minutes. Hey Google, set a timer for 10 minutes. So our next step is to wash the SS BrewTech brew bucket and so for that I have my PBW, I have my sponge, I have a container uh, marked out with approximately a thousand milliliters or one liter. I have my anvil brewing equipment scale. I have my gloves. So we're going to be using this entire eight ounce star sand container when we passivate. So we're investing about $12 into this. We don't need to use our entire container of PBW. We can be judicious with this. They recommend 0.75 ounces of PBW per gallon of water. One liter is a little bit less than a third of a gallon. So I'm using my one liter Erlenmeyer flask here. I'm going to fill it over that 1000 mark and I'm going to be using about a quarter of an ounce of PBW to make my cleaning solution here. It's about a third of a gallon. You know what they say, 90% of brewing is cleaning. So here we go. Make sure the valve is shut and get some elbow grease going. All right, we're going to take a short break here so that we can take a look at some of the other pieces here. We have the racking arm. Okay, so I'm going to take the O-rings off of the racking arm. Here, I'll show you right here and right here. 
and I'm going to go clean this out using the bottle brush, excuse me. Now to replace the batteries in our LCD thermometer, we are going to take off the protective covering here and open up the back of the LCD thermometer and take out the old batteries. You see, I already, already took out the old batteries because again, I, I don't use this. I use the Thermowell with my, my BrewBot uh, fermentation chamber controller. So I already took out the batteries so that they don't corrode in there. But still, I'll show you how to change them. They're right here in the back. And you have the batteries here that SS BrewTech put in the kit when you bought it. So I didn't have to go out and buy batteries, but even if I did, these are really standard LR44 batteries. Okay, these are the type of batteries that you see like in everything. You can find LR44 batteries practically anywhere they have batteries. We're gonna put these in uh, negative side down. Okay, close that up. Take a look at that. 72.9, it's going down, 73. 72.2 degrees in my kitchen right now. So, oops, putting it in the wrong way. I'm gonna put this back. I am going to use the thermometer today, uh, and it does have a slight upward tilt to it so that you can see it when you're standing up above it. So you wanna make sure that you put it in the right way to see that. I'm gonna put this, install this back in the front of my SS BrewTech brew bucket so that I can see the temperature of the solution, the uh, star sand solution, and I can make sure that I'm at the right temperature before I pour in the star sand. Let's do this. Walk straight, no need to mutate. Mutate, no need to if you passivate. You ready to passivate? I'm ready to passivate. So got my gloves on because I'm going to pour in our boiling water. It's slightly not boiling anymore. First thing we want to do, we want to make sure our valve is closed before we can dump this boiling water in here. And before we can start passivating this, which will be the last step, we need to clean the ports. So down here, our SS Brewtech Brew Bucket Brewmasters Edition has two ports here. I don't want, I have just a little bit of water there. I don't want to drip everywhere. We have our uh, ball valve here and we have our thermal well. So the ball valve, there we go. So because I can get a good handle on it, all I got to do is turn. So I've got the nut, got the ball valve. I am going to clean this out as well. Still had some water in there. I'm going to clean this out with the uh, brush over there and install it again before we move on. And the thermal well, I'm going to check on that too. Just inspecting everything here, making sure we're clean. We're going to replace that before dumping in the boiling water. So I have my new uh, gaskets here, my new O-rings. Now they do include a new O-ring for this with the brew buckets. So I'm going to use that one. So that means I have a bunch of extras, which is nice. Especially if you want to do something, if you want to sour something in here and you want to replace these afterwards, that's what you're going to need. Uh, so the ball valve, then the O-ring on the outside. The inside, all it has is the washer. So I'm going to place that inside. Place this here. Now you don't want to over tighten this. You want it to be tight enough so that you don't leak, obviously. But you want this to turn. Okay, you'd never want to turn it to the left because that might loosen the nut on the inside. But you want this to be able to turn a little bit at least so that when you have the racking arm in there, you can turn it towards the tube until you find it's not clean anymore and then stop it there and get the most amount of wort or the most amount of beer off of your tube as possible. So I've got it there. I've got it hand tightened. Next step is I'm going to dump in our boiling water. 
Now, if it leaks down there just a little bit, I can always tighten it from the outside. I'm not going to stick my hand in there, but it's already hand tightened. I'm going to put my towel there just in case. Let's dump in our boiling water. Remove the thermometer. Let's take a look to see if we're leaking. Nope, we are good. No leaks out front. Good. So next step is we are going to dump in some cold water until our temperature is about 70, 80, 90 degrees. I'm using my sink, but truthfully for cold water, if you don't have something bigger, you can go to your tub, your bathtub or your shower. fills up much quicker off of that faucet. I'm not in a rush. <sighs> Doing this in two gallon chunks because it makes it easier. Based on the markings inside here, I'm a little bit less than six gallons right now, uh, but I want to get it as close to the top as I can. Plus, I've got a whole eight ounces and we're looking for one ounce per gallon. So before we dump in the last amount here, I'm going to dump in our star sand so that last amount helps kick it up. But we're not going to completely lose the star sand. You'll see that at the end. Now, you want to be careful with star sand on kitchen counters especially uh, kitchen counters like this one, because you do have the possibility of leaving marks. There is a ring right over there that my wife wonders what it is, and, and uh, me too. I have, I have no idea, but be careful with your star sand around certain uh, places. I'm going to get this really close to the top here. Again, I don't want to overflow, but I also want it to passivate the entire thing here. So I'm really close to the edge here. The next step is we leave this for about 30 minutes. And then I'm going to take this star sand and put it in a container so that we can keep it. Hey Google, set a timer for 30 minutes please. Good, so well, we are waiting for this 30 minutes here. I'm going to replace the O-rings on the racking arm. And if you go to your local hardware store, because trust me, I tried, you can find O-rings, but to find them this thin, the uh, diameter of these o-rings at one millimeter was very difficult to find but placing them back on here is as simple as as putting them into the grooves grooves and uh that's it now you see i was looking for somewhere between 70 and 90 degrees here for my water and the thermal well is showing 79.3 degrees so not only is it a quick and easy way to get to the right temperature, but you get to boil and sterilize your silicone components as well. Half an hour, I'll be back and we'll drain this and we're done. We're ready for our next brew. It's been half an hour. Google has gone off. We should be passivated right now. I'll tell you, it looks great in there, but we don't want to waste all of this star sand, right? We have a, a very a highly concentrated star sand solution, about four times the normal amount needed. So we're gonna save this. So I have a clean carboy, a clean glass carboy here, and I have some tubing. So I'm going to fill up my carboy so I have at least that amount of star sand. Now, during that half an hour, I did replace the silicone gasket in the lid. Uh, you wanna make sure show you a little bit of that. You want to make sure that you get the edge up underneath the lip 
before putting it in. So that is how we passivate our stainless steel uh, pieces of kit here. The SS Brewtech brew bucket is my favorite fermenter. It's what I use for all of my beers right now. And uh, it is now passivated. It is ready for the next brew. I'm going to put the lid on it after this. And I'll see you on the next episode of WNY Beers. Thank you for watching. Cheers. Perfect timing.